we've watched some uh, truly innovative people talk about technologies and airframes and systems and so forth, but here we're talking about a whole state. Why are you at AUVSI? What is your message to this community? Well, North Dakota, uh, for a long time, well before the test site program uh, was uh, uh, conceived and implemented by the FAA, uh, has been uh, involved in unmanned aircraft systems, very specifically dating back to about 2005 when our military in the region, the Air National Guard and the Active Duty Air Force switched over to unmanned aircraft systems. At the same time, the Department of Home of Security brought in the MQ-9 to Grand Forks. Our academic institutions, University of North Dakota and North Dakota State University, both adopted electronic specialties in unmanned aircraft electronics and also the aviation aspects of it. Also invested by the state, we have tens of millions of dollars invested in unmanned aircraft systems in all those categories in the last 10 years. And then when the test site program came along, we were selected as one of the six test sites. We have something to offer this nation the industry and the world by bringing all of the experience we have to offer to the FAA to develop the systems and technologies and procedures to safely integrate unmanned aircraft systems. To answer your question about why we're here at AUVSI is to support industry and attract that industry to North Dakota to live, work, and do business. Under most circumstances, trying to exploit a new technology and more important getting a government and infrastructure support uh, for those new technologies can be a real barrier very difficult. How difficult a sale was it, so to speak, within the powers that be in North Dakota to tell them that this was the next big thing? Oh, it was pretty easy. My background is military. We could see very early, in the early 2000s, the applicability of unmanned aircraft systems. So in fact, when our guard unit, which I was the commander of at that time, flying F-16s, and we've flown fighter aircraft for 60 years, by the way, in our Air National Guard. But we actively sought for a transition into the MQ-1 because we knew that the unmanned systems were going to be, I'll call it the wave of the future, if you will, on the military side. And now, years later, we find ourselves in the technology transfer from the military to civilian applications. And again, we saw it coming a long time ago as a state, hence the interest and the funding and the support we get at every level of our government and in every institution across the state. Where do you go in the future? Uh, right now, there is finally an acknowledgement that the society, future, transportation, uh, all kinds of things are going to be changing as a result of unmanned vehicles. But what's the future look like from the standpoint of what you're researching and what you're finding to be promising at this point? The thing that mostly intrigues me is detect and avoid. Right now, the focus in the United States, a lot of interest in the small UAS rule mm -hmm. and the 333 exemptions for airworthiness that allow flight, uh, generally speaking, low altitude within line of sight of the operator and uh, smaller vehicles. Well, we're interested in enabling beyond visual line of sight operations, higher altitudes and with heavier aircraft. To me, that's the focus area that is going to enable uh, true widespread commercialization and business models of unmanned aircraft. And finally, for folks that are interested in what you're doing and trying to get more information about it, how can they do so? Any number of websites at our Department of Commerce or our research universities, North Dakota State University or University of North Dakota Aerospace, or ours, our Northern Plains UAS test site. Plenty of funding incentives in North Dakota, too, for companies that want to come and fly mm -hmm. and do some research in North Dakota. Simply stated, we will match your dollars one for one. So if you have a dollar's worth of research to do, you can do it for 50 cents in North Dakota. Outstanding. Robert Becklin, we thank you very much for joining us in Aero TV and with Airborne. We look forward to seeing what comes next from North Dakota. Yes, sir. Uh, us too. Aero TV is brought to you by Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero.